While well, most of my experiments in blowing soap bubbles focuses on how to blow the very largest soap bubbles, such as this image shows, I recently got interested in the opposite end of the spectrum, that is, how to blow the very smallest soap bubbles. This video will show what I learned and also present details on how to build your own mini soap bubble blowing machine. To figure out how to blow the smallest uh, soap bubbles possible, I started by examining wands and I learned two very interesting things. First, that the wand diameter has a very weak relationship to how big the resulting bubbles are. For example, if I took this wand uh, I'd get a, and blew a bubble through it, I'd get something uh, about an inch in diameter. If I cut the wand diameter in half, to half an inch, I'd still get a bubble that was close to an inch in diameter. At best, it was maybe 10% smaller. What that told me is that to get very small bubbles, I'm going to have to go to an almost microscopic wand diameter. And that created the second problem. When you get down to very small wands like this, and what I'm looking for is going to have to be much smaller than this, what happens is if you have a fan blowing air against this to create the bubbles, the surface tension of the bubble solution is strong enough in very small wands that it won't flex out and create a bubble. The air will just flow around it. I wasn't sure how I was going to resolve that problem, and then I saw a YouTube video where a man was blowing bubbles using a straw, much smaller than this, and producing streams of very small bubbles, and that the uh, bubble size seemed to be more connected to the diameter of the straw uh, than with a tr traditional wand. This looked like a promising avenue, but I was looking for a bubble machine, and I couldn't find a way to get the bubble solution constantly renewed in creating a new membrane through which air could be blown to uh, create bubbles and get the air into a series of tubes like this if they were going into a reservoir. Then I got the idea of combining the two techniques. I would use the straw to create a stream of air and the wand to create the membrane of bubble solution that would uh, create the bubbles. The straw would be constant and have a stream of air coming out of it, and then the bubble wands would be in a circular formation, motor-driven, that would dip them into a reservoir, like a regular bubble machine. As they swept past the straw, the straw would blow a very fine stream of air through the membrane and create very fine bubbles. Building on that idea, I constructed what I readily admit is probably the ugliest bubble machine ever created. The air source is a standard aquarium pump feeding through quarter inch line through a uh, adjustable valve to control the flow rate and up to what looks like the end of a hypodermic syringe but is actually the working end of something called a blas fix egg emptier. This ends in a metal tube where the dia inside diameter is only 10 thousandths of an inch. I tried smaller tubes, eventually working my way down to a hypodermic syringe. Uh, the problem is, is much smaller than this, and you can't see any color in the bubbles. They just look, look like uh, white specks floating around in the air. The bubble wand was scavenged from an old hurricane gazillion bubble machine. The drive motor is a 6 RPM motor scavenged from the microwave oven I pulled the transformer out of for my Lichtenberg wood burning experiments. And over here is a fan from a computer cooling unit to blow the bubbles up. The fan is necessary because the bubbles are so small, they have a high surface area to volume ratio, which means they're very heavy as far as soap bubbles are concerned. This means they fall very quickly. Now, I've tried adding in a T connection to pump some helium in from a helium uh, filling tank from like Walmart. And the trouble with that is getting the adjustment right so you have just enough helium going into the bubbles to keep them floating. Even when you get that just set right, 
there's a problem in that only about half of them are going to rise and float. Most of them are still going to fall. Besides the diameter of the tube determining the bubble size, I found two other things to control bubble size. First is how close the end of the tube is to the wand. The closer it is to the actual bubble membrane through which uh, the air is being blown, the smaller the bubbles are. The other factor is the speed with which the air is pumped through the tube. For any particular tube, I found that there is an optimum speed above which or below which bubble size actually increases. And here it is in operation. The smallest bubbles are 1 16th of an inch in diameter. The average is about an eighth of an inch to three eighths of an inch. The very largest are no larger than a quarter of an inch across. While about half of the bubbles, after being uh, moved upwards by the fan, fall immediately, the other half tend to float around quite satisfactorily. I found the inexpensive bubble solutions actually work much better than the higher end uh, solutions like uh, Gazillion or Bibu. The reason is that the cheaper solutions are thinner and allow the airstream to blow through the membrane easier. While I still prefer working on giant bubbles, I have to admit blowing a lot of almost microscopic bubbles is a lot of fun and if you have young children in the house, they'll love it. Thank you for watching.